Today we're going to cover the battery basics, and this includes battery safety, why it's important, and we'll also talk about filling your new battery, whether it's a conventional or maintenance-free battery, then after it's been filled, we'll also talk about properly charging your battery for the first time so you can get the most life out of it. This video will apply to all types of power sport batteries, so conventional and lead acid, maintenance-free and AGM, and also lithium batteries. If you need any help or information on deciding which battery is the best option for you, please refer to our battery types breakdown video. Alright, so as I mentioned, we're going to start with battery safety. So first and foremost, it's important that you read and follow any instructions or safety information provided with or on your battery. Safety glasses and protective gloves are required whenever you're working with the battery. You should clean up any acid spills immediately using water and baking soda to neutralize the battery acid. Keep in mind, battery acid is toxic and can cause harm or injury if it gets anywhere it's not supposed to be. Make sure your work area is clean and well ventilated, the gases produced from batteries charging or discharging are potentially flammable and explosive, so take the necessary steps to avoid causing injury or damage. So now we're going to go over the proper way to fill a battery. We're going to start with the conventional battery. As you open up the box, you'll find the instructions and the vent hose along with the battery terminal nuts. After that, we'll remove the battery and the acid pack from the box. From there, we'll go ahead and remove the acid pack from the plastic packaging. And then you'll notice that your kit came with two different sized hoses. The shorter one's gonna be used for filling the battery and the longer one's used for the vent hose. On a conventional battery, it's important that you remove the cap from the vent system on the battery before filling it with acid. And after we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and hook up this vent hose to the spout. Your motorcycle or ATV might already have a vent hose routed on the machine, so you can go ahead and hook that up when you install the battery. And now the battery is ready to be filled. To prepare the acid pack, you'll notice that on one side it has a cap. This is just used for the manufacturer to fill the pack with acid. We're gonna be using the spout on the other side to fill the actual battery. So the first thing we're going to do is remove the cap to each cell. Keep in mind some of these will be threaded into the battery top, but as you can see these ones just pulled out. So after all those caps have been removed, we're going to go ahead and snip off the very end of that spout on the acid pack. And then we'll go ahead and slide that short hose into place to help us with filling the battery. So to fill the battery, just slide that hose into one of the cell openings and then you'll lightly squeeze the acid pack to squirt the acid into the cell. We're just going to fill it to the upper level line and then move to the next cell. And we're just going to repeat those same steps until all the cells in the battery are filled. You'll notice that the levels in each cell may slightly drop as the acid seeps in through the plates and the air bubbles are removed. Just go ahead and continue to add acid where it's needed to fill each cell making sure each level is at or just below the upper level line on the battery. You should have plenty of acid to do this. It's a good idea to lightly tap the sides of the battery to make sure any air bubbles between the plates are removed. And then when your levels are all correct, go ahead and install your cell caps. If your battery uses threaded caps, make sure you only finger tighten these and avoid using pliers or a screwdriver. After that, we can go ahead and clean off any spill acid with a rag or water and baking soda then this battery is ready to charge. Before we discuss charging methods, we're going to go ahead and demonstrate the proper way to fill a maintenance-free battery. So after we open the box, we're going to find the instructions, along with the battery hardware, and also inside that little baggie, you'll find a little push pin, and we'll talk about what this is for a little later. After that, we can go ahead and pull our acid pack out, and you'll see that this is a pre-measured individual cell pack. This will be specific to this battery, We'll go ahead and pull that out as well. So the first step is just to remove the foil cap that sealed the battery. After that's been removed, we can go ahead and remove the acid pack from its plastic packaging. And you'll notice there's a plastic cap on the acid pack. You'll just want to sit that aside as it's going to become the cap for the battery. You'll also find a set of instructions and battery filling tips. And then also notice that each cell in the acid pack is sealed by a foil piece. Each cell on the battery has a sharpened edge designed to puncture these caps as the acid pack is pressed down onto the battery. So we'll go ahead and do that. Go ahead and sit that acid pack onto the battery and then puncture each of the cells by pressing the acid pack down. 
you should start to see bubbles appearing in each of the cells, and that means the fluid's making its way into the battery. To help speed the filling process up a little bit, go ahead and use the provided push pin to poke a small breather hole into each one of the cells. Now you can see the fluid flowing in a little faster. It's critical that all the electrolyte from each cell in the acid pack is emptied into the battery. You want to let the battery sit for 30 minutes to an hour like this to make sure this happens. So now we've let it sit long enough, we can go ahead and remove that empty acid pack from the battery. And the last thing to do is just go ahead and install the battery cap. You want to press this down with your fingers, you don't want to use a hammer to do this. Now this battery is ready to be charged. A battery's first initial charge is the most important charge of its life. If you don't fully charge a new battery before running it on your machine, it's possible that the battery can never fully reach 100% charge. This rule is true for all batteries except for lithium batteries. These are the only batteries that are truly ready to install and run right out of the box. So to charge a battery properly, there are a few key rules you need to follow in order to do it correctly and safely. So the first thing to remember is it's important not to use an automotive battery charger when charging a power sports battery. These batteries require a lower amperage charger to avoid causing overheating and damage to the battery. To figure out what amperage your battery is supposed to be charged at, go ahead and divide its amp hour rating by 10. For example, if you have a 14 amp hour rated battery, that divided by 10 would be 1.4, so therefore it should be charged at 1.4 amps. A motorcycle battery or other smaller battery should never be charged at anything higher than 3 amps. Here we have just a couple of the many battery charger options available on our website www.rockymountainatvmc.com. This one's the Deltran Battery Tender Junior, and then this one's the Tusk 1.5 amp battery charger with auto shutoff. For this battery, we're going to go ahead and use the Tusk battery charger. So just go ahead and connect it to the battery, and you can see the red light comes on, indicating the battery is being charged. It's important to monitor your battery during charging, and if the battery becomes warm to touch, go ahead and remove it from the charger by first shutting the charger off, and then removing the connectors from the terminals to avoid causing any sparks. Let the battery cool off, and after it does, you can continue charging it. For the conventional lead acid type batteries, anytime you're charging this type of battery, you need to watch the electrolyte levels. If it falls under the specified level in any one of the cells, you need to use only distilled water to bring the level back up to the correct height. So after a few hours, the light's going to turn green, indicating the battery is now fully charged, and the charger will then automatically shut off. Having a battery undercharged can harm the battery and shorten its life. The same goes for overcharging a battery. If you're using one of the smart chargers, such as the Deltran Battery Tender, after the battery has reached 100% charge, the tender moves into float mode and then holds the battery at full charge without overcharging it. If the battery drops below 100%, the tender will then kick on and bring the battery back up to 100%. For more information on battery chargers and properly maintaining your battery, you can refer to our battery maintenance video. So now your new battery is fully charged and ready to be installed onto your machine. It's a good idea to apply some grease or terminal coating to prevent any corrosion on your terminals. Again, if you have a conventional or lead acid type battery, make sure your vent hose is correctly routed and isn't pinched or kinked anywhere, and then you're ready to ride. If you have any questions about which battery is best for your application, or how to properly activate your new battery, please feel free to give us a call at 1-800-336-5437. Rocky Mountain ATVMC carries a wide variety of batteries to power all your needs. Thanks for watching.